Thank you. There we are. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you. 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 Of the Oriental morning after, I'm afraid. Takeaway had more in it than you bargained for, eh? Something like that. Where'd you go? Blackpool. <clears throat> I had to entertain a client. Being single in my firm carries definite drawbacks. I think you're always available to keep customers entertained. Why Blackpool? Uh, well, you've never been. <clears throat> you've never eaten boiled tree bark or whatever it was he ordered. You taking anything? You got any stuff in the house? Carolyn, something like that? Nope. Oh, we have. Do you want some? Uh, please. Hang on, I'll go and get it. What are you up to? Oh, just a bit of business overflowing from work. Do you know where we keep the Carolyn and Morphine, Dad? Well, it's in one of the kitchen cupboards. Ah. Why, aren't you feeling so well? No, I'm, uh, I'm all right, but Jonathan next door is suffering a bit. Oh, you want me to take it over to him? Yeah, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Thanks. I'll sort him out. Hello, Mr Hignall. Yeah, Gordon Collins. Yes. Yeah, I've got some good news for you about the car. Yes. Yeah, bit of a struggle, but I've managed to sort it out. Attending to the sick. Jonathan's suffering from last night's Chinese, so he's taken around some kale and morphine. Hope he didn't eat at the golf club. Well, are we having lunch at the golf club? That's what I'd like to know. Yes, of course we are. I don't know why you sound so certain. And he hasn't asked me properly yet, you know. Look, Mum, he wants you to have lunch with us at the club. But it isn't easy for him to ask you, you know. And it's not easy for any of us to live in a state of family hostilities. Don't you think a big effort is needed all round so we can return to peaceful coexistence? I have tried, Gordon. Stopping me having access to money is hardly helping the situation. Well, I think if we started to examine who's in the right and wrong, you might come off a bad second. Look, Mum, I don't particularly want to discuss this, but... If things have to be said in order to get us back to normal, then let's talk it through. You upstairs, Gordon? Yes, Dad. I've given him a double dose. I don't think the poor lad will be spending much time at his desk today. Dad, about lunch. What about lunch? I want to ask Mum to come with us, as we discussed. I've mentioned it. If your mother wants to come along, that's fine by me. But I'm not going to be put out if she doesn't want to. I am here, Paul. Don't talk about me as I'm out of the house. Well, do you want to come or not? Well, seeing as how you're proposing to talk about my mother over lunch, I think you're taking a very high-handed attitude, as usual. Can we please look forward to a civil meal with civil company? Instead of the prospect of sarcastic snipes across the table, why can't you ask her pleasantly? I don't know what you two have been talking about. You don't think I'm going to play the villain in any of this, this sordid affair? Please, Dad. Never mind, please, Dad. You don't think I can forget what your mother did, do you? You don't think there might have been a reason why I was driven to it? Don't come that nonsense with me. Don't blame me for your pathetic little affair. Pathetic little affair? Brian Lawrence was twice the man you've been for an awful long time. Don't forget that. Don't you dare talk like that in front of Gordon. Gordon's old enough to know why I needed to look elsewhere. 
How dare you stand up in front of me and take that tone? And how dare you talk and plan about my mother behind my back and come that high moral tone with me? What would have happened with Betty Hunt if I hadn't arrived home when I did? Don't judge everyone else by your own low standards. Nothing would have happened. That hardly surprises me. Why? Oh, for God's sake, Dad, just look at you. Just look at both of you. It's pathetic. Neither of you has the guts to walk out on the other. Instead, you just bicker and squabble. You both know it can't go on like this. And you both know that you won't separate because each needs the other. That's enough, Gordon. No, Mum. It's not nearly enough. What you did was unforgivable. But you did it. We all have to live with that. The way you reacted, Dad, was... It's just absolutely stupid. And bringing that Betty woman into the house was... It's just ridiculous. Now, either make up... or do something positive. But please, stop acting like two six-year-olds who have just fallen out. Sorry about the wall. That mess can be cleaned up in five minutes, Dad. What about the rest of it? Sorry. Would you mind going out for a while? Sorry, I lost my temper. I don't enjoy seeing you crying, no matter what the circumstances are. I can't feel guilty. I feel I should. And I'm sorry I've hurt you. I really am. But if we're going to be honest, I have to say that I don't feel guilty. Are you still seeing him? Do you want to see him again? No, Paul. And I won't lie to you. But there are two sides to not lying. That means I can't say that I regret doing what I did. You're telling me it's just about going to bed with him? Yes. If I think about it seriously, it was. I get no pleasure out of talking about this with you, Paul. I don't want to hurt you any more than I already have done. What do you want? Isn't that what it's all about? Hurting me? Hurting me because I'm your husband? And not an officer in the army anymore? Or a man with a decent job in a big company? Isn't that what you're trying to tell me? That I've become a senior citizen and there on my own? If I turn round, I'll find you looking for a younger man? That I'm all used up? Do you think I could be so intentionally cruel? I don't think it. I know it. Good God, woman, don't you know what you've done to me? I'm older than you. And it's at a time in our lives when the differences are beginning to show. I'm 
retired, redundant. And I've certainly more time behind me than I have in front. But I'm still me. I'm still your husband. I get frightened, Annabelle. Frightened of all sorts of things. One of them is losing you. Gordon was right about a lot of things. But he didn't quite get everything right. He was right about me not walking out. It isn't because there was nowhere to go. I didn't go because... Because I love you, Anna. No one has ever hurt me as much as you have recently, but I love you. And if you thought I didn't, then I'm sorry. I won't persuade you to, to stay. You must make the decision. It must be an honest one. To yourself, as well as to me. Truce to show a civilized front, or have things really taken a turn for the better? Well, let's say I'm optimistic. Good. Well, I wonder where Mr. Fallon is. Oh, he'll be here. He's one of the old school. Do you think he's got any idea what he's in for? You make it sound so he's due for an interrogation. And isn't he? Gerald Fallon, what are your intentions with regards to my mother in law? Do you promise to love, honour, obey, and not touch a penny of her savings? Will you keep her in the manner to which she's become accustomed, and if you go first, leave all your worldly goods to the Collins family? <laughs> keep your voice down. Somebody might hear you. <laughs> you both seem to be having a good time. People wouldn't think so if they overheard us. Are you really going to question Mr. Fallon about his motives towards Mother? Oh, yes. But gentler than you make it sound. We do have to be practical. Oh, don't worry. I won't put the old boy under too much pressure. So if he ever turns up. Well, I'd like to propose a toast. To Mother and Mr. Fallon? No. To you two. Oh, he's here. But, uh... This is an unexpected pleasure, Mother. Well, we never go anywhere without each other. Uh, unless it can't be helped, of course. Well, I knew you were going to discuss my worldly goods, so I thought the least I could do was join in. Mother, don't be so stuffy, Annabelle. To be quite frank, I can honestly say that I'm marrying your mother for her money. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we order? Champagne. I'll pay. As ever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Mrs. Rogers. Would you like to come in? Yes. Thank you. Uh, sit down. 
And what's the weather doing in the big wide world? I wouldn't know. I've been in here for quite some time. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's been a busy morning. Now, what can I do for you, Mrs. Rogers? I've had this report done. And it states quite categorically that Jeff has dyslexia. Now, under these new circumstances, is there anything else that you can do for him, please? Dyslexia covers an awful lot of problems, you know. Right. I'll read it all, if you'll bear with me. Mother's been a long time. It's a fine view of the 18th Green on the way to the toilets. She's probably watching the play. She'll be all right. Even so, just to set my mind at ease. Well, I, uh, I suppose this is an ideal opportunity to discuss uh, why I want to marry Mona. Well, I think you can understand our concern. We are the closest family. And uh, she does have a history of being, shall we say, a little unpredictable. <laughs> Mad as a hatter at times, I believe. But, um, well, you could put that down to loneliness. Oh, and the sedation she was under and that horrible nursing home, the one she was in at first. But Mona's fine now. All she needs is a little loving care. Well, I'm going to try and provide it. Well, as long as you know what you're taking on. Yes, of course I do. Well, if nothing else, we can stop each other going completely bonkers. <laughs> but seriously, though, you know, I understand your concern over Mona's money. You're quite right. But well, that's got nothing to do with me. I don't want any part of it. Besides, I'm lucky. I've, well, I've got everything that I need. Hello, stranger. How are you? Oh, ready? Oh, great. Yourself? Oh, top of the wardrobe. Oh, uh, Gerald? Hi. Ah. Gordon? Hi. Eddie Slattery. Eddie and I used to work together. Too long ago than either of us care to remember, eh? <laughs> You've retired now, I hear. Yes, too long ago than I care to remember. Where are you now? Still at Safian Parliament? No, I'm doing my own business. Oh, you always wanted to branch out. Going well? Keeping the wolf from the door. <laughs> Knowing you, that probably means you're on your way to... <laughs> Hang on, this couldn't possibly be Gordon, your son. Well, certainly is. Well, I never. You've just made a happy man feel very old. I can remember Paul bringing you into the office one Saturday and you put about a thousand staples into my blotting pad. <laughs> Longer ago than I care to remember. And have you followed your father into the chemical industry? No, I uh, sell cars. Do you now? Huh? Would you uh, buy a used car from this man? Very possibly. I'm looking for a man in the business. We could be in a position to do each other a favor, Gordon. Well, I'm always happy to talk to prospective clients. Give me a call. Any time before 10 this week and we'll have a chat. Well? well? It seems to be a very thorough examination of Jeffrey's problem. Well, it is. I'm relieved that at long last we can identify his problem and we can do something about it. What did you have in mind? Well, isn't that a question that I should be asking you? Obviously, I want to do all I can for Jeffrey. But the difficulty is, this is your report. Well, what does it matter whose report it is? It's about Jeff. And it says in no uncertain terms that he has dyslexia. What? It's the duty of the educational authority to act upon it, get him out of the remedial class and help him. Of course it is. I couldn't agree with you more. But there are definite procedures to follow. And we must remember that although you're quite rightly concerned with the welfare of your own child, we do have to deal with many, many other cases. There is no need to talk down to me like that. I have had an examination done at my own expense which identifies a problem with my child. Now I want his school to act upon it. It's as simple as that. Not quite. I have to wait for the authorities' report before I can act. But that's stupid. There's a report in front of you now. The crux of the problem is that the authority won't recognize your report. It merely adds to our level of information about Geoffrey, but it doesn't make the authority's official report redundant. I have gone to the trouble and expense of having a report done, and are you telling me it's a waste of time and money? Of course it wasn't. You now have the peace of mind of knowing exactly what Geoffrey's problem is. Peace of mind? I've no peace of mind until Jeff is receiving the best possible education, and he's not receiving that while he's stuck in that class. I don't think I'm not being sympathetic, Mrs. Rogers. I just want what's best for Jeffrey, but my hands are tied. I would like to see the person in charge of specific learning difficulties for this area, please. 
That's probably very difficult, Mrs. Rogers. Why don't you pick up that phone and find out how difficult it is, Mr. Jenkins? Been having a wander around? Mm. Only into the gentleman's lounge. Oh. Oh. Didn't anybody object? They were absolutely charming, especially the estate agent. The estate agent? Yes, says he wants to make my life easier for me. Mother, what do you mean? Well, you know what a headache the old house has been to me now. And I was telling the estate agent this, and he says he's going to sort it all out for me. He's told me about the importance of having liquid capital if I want to invest in anything. So I said I would discuss it with my fiancé. But I didn't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about money and silly things like houses and wills. I want to talk about the wedding, who we're going to invite. I'm sorry, Mrs. Rogers, but it's going to be quite some while before he can see you and Geoffrey. The problem is, he's trying to pick up children with learning difficulties around the seven and eight year mark. And what with Geoffrey being 14? He's written off. No, of course not. It's just that you'll have to wait. All I'm asking for is our rights. The right for my son to receive the best education available to. It isn't my fault there's only one person to cover learning difficulties in this area. But it is a fact of life, Mrs. Rogers. He's 14 years of age. Soon he'll have to choose options and then take exams which will affect the rest of his life. And I'm not going to stand by and watch him thrown on the scrappy because of bureaucratic nonsense. We can't afford to waste money on reports that nobody can act on. And why should we? We can't afford a private education, but I am not going to let him be destroyed by the inadequacy of this education system. Please calm down, Mrs. Rogers. This will get us nowhere. Won't it? By God, we create their wealth and fight their wars, and all we ask back is a decent national health and education for our children. And if that can't be had within the system, then I'll take him out and I'll do it myself. Jeff! <laughs> Mega! Coming up next, another slice of everyday life in Europe's largest teaching hospital, Jimmy's in Leeds. cooks up a special breakfast, but Paul's still on a downer in Brookside. I'm teaching you at home doesn't mean to say that you've got to get slovenly. It's all right, Mum. What's the substrate at nine o'clock? Oh, yes. Now, look, let's get one thing straight. From nine o'clock, this living room becomes a classroom. And guess what lesson number one is, Rogers? Games. Lesson number one is no pyjamas. Now, I want you back down here in your full school uniform. No pyjamas. Understood? Come on.
Okay, we'll have to try and get through this pretty quickly, Tracy. Sorry to have to get you in so early, but paying customers get first call on normal office hours. Oh, thanks. Make me feel like I'm getting charity. I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you. Well, how long have we got? Have I got to speak dead fast? Tracy. Yeah, well, you know I could pay it if I hadn't lost my job. I know, I know, and that's why I'm here. That's why we've both come in early. So let's get on, see if we can give your case a bit of muscle. Saw you come in your car this morning. It's a bit flash, isn't it? Gets me about. I haven't even got a bike. It's definitely not cornflakes I can smell. Coffee? Is it what I think it is? Depends what you think it is. <sighs> not fine, Kippa. Correct. Very nice. Haven't bought me a Kippa for a long time. You still like them, I presume? There's only one way to find out. Thank God some things don't change. Ah. Mm. All right, I'll go. You stay and eat it while it's warm. Oh, hello, Eddie. Hello, Anna. Oh, this is a surprise. Paul will be pleased. Come in. I hope it's not too early for you. Oh, no, of course not. Paul, it's Eddie. Uh, do go through. Hello, Eddie. Can I take your coat? Oh. You just caught me in the middle of my breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I should have phoned, shouldn't I? <laughs> Go on, don't mind me. No, no, it'll keep. Looks like you're getting the five-star service, Paul. Uh, I've not called in an anniversary or anything, have I? Uh, uh, no, nothing like that. Uh, no, just a bit of a treat. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me interrupt you. You carry on. So, how are you, Paul? Life in the old dog yet, is there, Anna? Can I get you some coffee? No, thanks, Anna, love. It's a bit of a flyer this time, I'm afraid. Actually, I only popped round to get the address of where Gordon works. Oh. He was going to give me a ring about some business, but I need to talk to him sooner than expected. Well, he hasn't gone in yet. He's upstairs doing some paperwork. I'll tell him you're here. Oh, sorry, Eddie. I'd assumed it was a social call. Well, at least it'll save you a trip to the garage. Right, come on, you sit down. And sit up. Can't do both. Now, listen, I've taken the time off work to get you started on this. You are going to be the number one pupil in my class. You are going to shine. Oh, and comb your hair before you come down next time, eh? You're worse than Stitch. Oh, who's Stitch? Mr Taylor, my form teacher. What are you going to call me? Well, I won't have to call you Miss, will I? Shall I call you uh, Rogers or shall I call you Geoffrey? Most of them call me Donuts. I thought they called you Grandma. Oh, it's just Mr Taylor with his register. When he reads it out, he has nicknames for us all, thinks he's dead funny. Yeah, I bet. Now, listen. I've planned the timetable for the week, and the first lesson on Monday is geography. So I've sorted out these for you. OK. And what's these? Well, they're word cards, love. I do know a little bit about what I'm talking about. They're just puzzles, really. Just to get us started so I see how well you can cope, eh? You see, here's the names of all the different countries going in different directions. And you just have to find them and mark them. And then we'll go through the words later on in English. These for the week, then? These are for today. Do you take me a week? Well, then, what if you won't get started? Can't find any. <sighs> Jeff, you do realise that I'm going to have to be the cleaner, the caretaker and the dinner lady here, you know? But I can't find any. <sighs> There's no such word as can't, Jeff. That is for me, Mum. OK, love. We'll go through them together, then, eh? Here we are. So, what do you think? Is it important what I think? Of course. Well, I don't think I want to go through with it. I think you do. I thought it was important what I thought. Tracy, I'm a solicitor. Cat and mouse word games are my speciality. Of course what you think is important. But me thinking I know the difference between what I think you're thinking and what you're telling me is even more important, OK? They're not going to speak to me like that, are they, at the tribunal? They might well do. Oh, I definitely don't want to go through with it. I think you do. Well, they make me look stupid. 
I got all tongue twisted and confused. Not after a bit of coaching from me. Okay, you're a little bit frightened. That's understandable. But don't let it get to you. Now, are we going to string this guy up, or are we going to wait until he gets someone into real trouble? Sorry about that, Mr. Slattery. Halfway through a bit of calculator business. Got to keep everything straight, otherwise I'll end up a very rich man without a penny in the bank. You don't need to talk to me about keeping the book straight, Gordon. I've been self-employed for three years. So what can I do for you? Well, I was hoping to see you at work. I don't want to interfere with the daily routine of the home. Oh, no problem to us, Eddie. Old friends are always welcome, however brief the call. Mum said you're interested in uh, buying something. Or was it selling? Well, it's a bit more complex than that. After our recent conversation at the golf club, uh, I had an idea. Uh, thought you might, uh, we might come to some arrangement that would be to our mutual advantage. Are you sure I can't get you a cup of coffee? No, thanks, Anna, love. I'm a bit pushed. Look, Gordon, my car's outside. It might be easier to talk out there, if you wouldn't mind. No, of course. Don't mind us. You carry on. I'll just get my coat and I'll be with you. I'm oh, sorry about that. If you want any help or anything, you know where we are. Thanks, Paul. Well, I'll just keep the cold out. Look, I don't want this to take forever, Gordon. You'll either be interested or you won't. I'm sure we can sort something out. This has to be very much between you and me alone. Is there a problem in that? No problem for me. Is this the one you want to talk about? No, this is Mrs. Slattery's, fortunately. At least this is one asset the uh, receivers won't manage to freeze. So what can I do for you? Or should I say, what can we do for each other? Well, just at the moment, the firm needs to dig itself out of a hole. I thought a little extra unseen profit on the company vehicles might help me buy a spade. <laughs> So what are you thinking? One of the pickup trucks. The a couple of years old. The list price is three five. If you were to take it off my hands for two five, you could sell it at list price and we could split the difference. Fifty fifty? I wouldn't want to be greedy. Fifty fifty would do me. In good nick, is it? Oh, you'd have no problem selling it. I'd do it myself if I could clear the paperwork. I presume you'd have no problem in that department. Uh, it's the easiest part of it. I buy it as a bargain, I sell it as a profit. Couldn't make a living if I didn't do that every day of the week. I'm sorry to do this on your doorstep, Gordon. I only wanted your work address. No problem. Look, there's the address. I must get on. My feet aren't touching the ground. I'm sure you know what I mean. Do you want to leave any tracks? That's the one. Listen, how soon do you want this sorted? How soon can you come up with the cash? As soon as I've seen the motor. What about lunchtime? Mm, do you want me to bring it round? No, I'll come to you. Look, tell your father I'm sorry to dash. Uh, I'll meet him at the club one night. Buy you both a drink on expenses. And don't worry about the receiver. They're weeks behind. Bye. You know our weak link is still Nikki, don't you? She's still not been in touch. Thought you were supposed to be my mate as well. Well, just think about it. If you're intimidated by all this, think how she might be feeling. She might be worried that if you lose your case, she could lose her job as well. She'll be feeling pretty isolated too, you know? Yeah, I suppose so. What do you think about trying to see her? What for? To try and talk her into it. She's an important witness for you, Tracy. It's up to you. If you want a definite chance of winning, you need to find her and talk to her. So, go and do it. Hmm, looks interesting. The state agent's bump from Kendall. Keeping my eye on the state of the property market. Oh, there's one round the corner here from Mother's. Oh, how much? Uh, no price. Offers invited. Are we thinking of buying something? Thinking of Gordon and Lucy. Thinking of buying them a timeshare. Thinking of their future financial needs. Uh, I think they seem to manage very well without us thinking for them. After a fashion. Just using my experience to prevent my family being bankrupted by your mother and... A uh, fancy man. General Fallon is hardly a fancy man. Right. Oh, what was all that about? Oh, he just wanted me to do some business for him, that's all. Didn't bother to say goodbye? Yeah, I told you. He said to say cheerio. I think he's got rather a lot on his mind at the moment, Dad. Anyway, I'm off. See you later. Bye, Mum. Bye. I think Gordon is more than capable of earning a good living. He hasn't got a pension plan. He's got no long-term investments. Now your mother's throwing herself at this man. He stands a good chance of losing his rightful inheritance. Mother. 
mother will look after him. She's very fond of him. Anna, I'm planning her finances, not plotting a takeover bid. Suppose she does marry this fallen man and then, God forbid, dies. Everything she's got will go to his children. His children, we haven't even seen them. Gordon and Lucy left with nothing because we haven't bothered to advise them. She can't have been busy all afternoon. Will you tell me to phone back at this time? Well, have you told her who it is who wants her? Well, have you told her it's important? OK, thanks. Tra. Hiya. I've just come to get some books at a library. He said he'd be finished with them by today. Oh, they'd probably be in his room. You'd better just go and get them. Still working. At this time? Got all this lot to do. Why should I let you finish it tomorrow? Leave it to light. It just means I'll be behind. Hello, love. Oh, is your top made washing? It does, yeah. Can you smell it from there? She stinks. Throw it down when you get changed. You're the one who smells. Oh, haven't you finished yet? She won't shut up and let me concentrate. Come on, upstairs. Don't forget, throw that top down when you're changing. I think I might have dyslexia, Mum. Can I have school at home? Get up. He's got to finish before his dad comes home. Come on. I can't eat upstairs. He's got space <gasps> in his room to wear. Up now! I want to watch telly now, Dad. And I want you upstairs now. Go on. Will you get on with that, please? She's worse than the teachers, you know. I almost got past the savvy. What for? Nothing. What else? For being stupid, and that's why you get past it. I'll burst you! <laughs> Are you in a rush? No, not really. Why, what up? Don't know where to start. Something happened? No. Well, yeah. About two months ago. When you lost your job? Well, why I lost my job? What do you mean? Well, this fella called Gerard, and he was always, you know, on at me, telling me to be nice to him, wanting me to smile at him all the time. Do you know what I mean? Is this a creep? I hate him, you know. Do you ever touch her? Well, he tried, but never ever got very far. Has he been coming round here or something with your dad's at work? No, please don't mention this to me, Dad or Rod. They killed me for not telling them earlier. They're going to find out sooner or later, aren't they? I just want someone to talk to. I don't want someone to go around and smash the fella's face in. Talk to me. Do you mind? Wish to mind. I'm going to be your sister-in-law soon, aren't I? At least you can be sure I'm not going to go around smashing anyone in the face. Oh, I'm glad you're back. Nice to be wanted. I've arranged to go and see Mother to talk about the will and everything. I phoned the matron just now and she said Mother's quite clear today, so why not come over? I'm just getting changed. Hello, love. What's up? Shh. What's going on? You can't go in there. That's Miss Rogers' class. She's dead strict. You won't, love. Miss Rogers, she's still teaching our Jeff at this time. So what are you doing on the stairs? I was sent out. Of the living room? Shh, of Miss Rogers' class. Till when? Till he's finished his way. Oh, don't be stupid, love. You can't sit on the stairs all night. Taking your shoes off. Oh, I shouldn't. I'm not going anywhere. I thought you wanted to talk to Mother. 
I don't want to offer help where it won't be welcomed. Well, you said she needed help with her finances. She has a son of her own who's far more qualified than me. I don't want to seem to be interfering. Nobody sees it as interfering. A new husband might. Well, what about all you said about Gordon and Lucy earlier today? What about all you said about them managing without us thinking for them? Thanks, you two. You can come on down now. Come on, love. Let's get this lot tidied away, eh? I'm knackered, Mum. I beg your pardon? I'm tired, Mum. Come on. Really tired. We've got to get it tidied away. Just take those things upstairs, eh? Hi, love. Could you sort this table out, please? I've been sewing stuff out all day, Chris, and I'm knackered. Tired, Dad. No bad language in class, please. Chris, this can't go on, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I know we were late finishing, but it's been a really good day. No, hang on. I mean, it's all out of school business. Oh, it was fine, honestly. Worked far better than I thought it would, you know. Yeah, but for how long? It was the benefit of being one-to-one -one that really showed. It's the kind of attention he wouldn't be getting at school, you know. All right, you've had one good day with him. Mm -hmm. What happens when you've had him a week and then a month? Well, I'll be better organised by then, won't I? I'll have sorted his books out. I'll be able to give him extra work on the things he's weakest at. We made a really good team, you know. We've decided on what projects he's going to do, and I've decided on what books I need to get to bring me up to date. There's a few different approaches with these new GCSEs being brought in. It's been a real education, love. Chris, who is getting the most out of this, Jeff or you? Jeff, of course. Who do you think? And what about the things he's not getting? He's not being treated like a normal lad for a start. He's being treated different to his mates. That's bad enough in itself. We made all the show out of him doing this lot. We're doing it because it's the only way he's going to get any sort of special attention for his dyslexia. Can I come in now? I'm sorry, love. We won't be long. Go on. Look, it'll be fine, honestly. It might be fine, but is it right? Have you checked with the people from the Dyslexia Society? I mean, if they recommend it, there'll be kids getting taught at home all over the place, and there'll be loads of teachers out of work for a start. Frank, the school couldn't do anything for him. Not in the short term, no. Well, I can. And how do we pay the mortgage while you take all this time off work, eh? Chris, at least ring the woman from the society and see what she says. He worked really hard today, you know. He really tried. I'll call the matron. I could cook something special for dinner, if you like. It'll take more than some fancy pasta to rebuild the bridges, Anna. Yes? Yeah, but hang on, how about... Yes, I'm sorry, yeah, go on, yeah. How'd it go today, then? Not bad. Teacher was a bit strict. Did you miss school? Yes, I know. No? Thought I would, but didn't. Must have missed your mates, though. I don't know. It made it easier to concentrate. You know, just yes. me being on my own. Better. Till Katie came in. Hey, and me. Nice to stand out in the corridor. Yeah. yeah. OK, yes, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Bye-bye. So? Well, she said that taking him out of school was not recommended, and in her opinion, provoking a confrontation with the school is not necessarily the right road to take. There you go. There you go, nothing, Frank. She was wrong. And, Jeff, the same thing tomorrow, eh? Nine o'clock with your hair brushed and no pyjamas, right? I'm ready for this. So am I, Tar. I think I'd be scared, you know. I'd hate to be in your position. It is horrible. So, come on. What's the problem? I mean, besides this guy, Gerard, who sounds like he's got a problem. Well, I'm having second thoughts about going through with it. You can't have second thoughts? Well, I just don't know if it's worth the fuss. If you worked in a hospital, you'd know it was worth the fuss. Some of the women we have to look after because of what some fella's done to them. Some don't come back regular, and they keep coming back because they don't want to cause a fuss. 
women getting battered doesn't just mean a slap round the face, it means broken bottles, all sorts. I mean, like, really bad stuff. No one ever hit me with anything. But he lost your job because he can't control himself. You should have that's a list of yours to time off a little knot to stop him doing it again. She was on at me this morning, telling me to get my witness sorted out. She must think you've got a good case. I just thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. We're doing them for unfair dismissal under the Sexual Discrimination Act or something. And, well, if I can't get Nicky to testify, then it's just my word against his. And you're in the right. Nicky knows that. Yeah, of course she does. So what's the problem? Get on to her. Well, that's what my solicitor said. Nicky still works there, you see. And I phoned his and her mum said she's at work. So I found her at work. And they just keep putting me off. It's like she doesn't want to speak to me. She might be scared of losing her job. Or that Gerard one might be screening the calls, you know, who's getting them and who off. Well, I can't make her do something she doesn't want to. You don't know for definite she doesn't want to do it. Why don't you just go round and see her? I wouldn't know what to say to her. Well, if she's in two minds, she'd have to persuade her. But if she has nothing of how you, I'd twist her arm off her back and force her to be a witness. Is that I'll give her a truth drug? I could bring you some sodium pants, that often work. When you go round now, I'll come with you. No, it's too late. By the time we got there, she'd be on her way home. Do you not know where she lives? We only mates that way. We were only mates at work. Let's just go round there, then. Well, I'm going to have to, aren't I? Just hope Gerard doesn't see us. with us and take the temperature of life on the wards today at Jimmy's. That's off the break. Do you need any help? No. Listen, can I interrupt you for a minute? You're a teacher. Doesn't stop me from being polite. Most of them don't bother. Just go, don't let's creep your ears out and listen. Listen, I've got a bit of a problem. I thought I was the one with the problem. I've got to go into work, just for about an hour, though. Why don't you go, then? Because I'm supposed to be here doing this with you. It's all right, this'll take ages, this lot. It's just to see Maggie, to sort some stuff out with her. You know, some contracts I've been working on I've got to transfer over so she can keep covering for me, all right? Don't know why you don't just go. Are you sure? Just, if we keep talking about it, I won't get this lot done anyway. It won't be long. Just go, Mum. All right, I understand. I'll see you later on, eh? No way, miss. Titi's aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> Thank you. 
the boss. That's not going to come for me, is it? Mind if I walk with you? Well, if my old legs can keep up with you. No, they won't. I'll tell you what, Tracy, three kids, all the running round you have to do, you feel like it, but you do. Are you going shopping? No, I've got to go meet some girl I used to work with. I've got to see her in a lunch plate. Nice. We don't know. She doesn't know I'm coming. Oh, it'll be a nice surprise for them, won't it? Good God, it's Teddy. Something's happened to Mother. They must have phoned while we were out. Oh, well, not necessarily. It might be just a social call. Not from the look on his face, it isn't. Morning. You're out and about early. Is everything all right? Apart from me freezing out here. Has anything happened to Mother? Well, that's exactly what I've come to ask you. I got this wild and wonderful letter this morning inviting me to give her away. Oh, the wedding of the year. What? The wedding of the year. Mona and Mr. Fallon. It's not uncommon for a son to be asked when the mother remarries. But she can't remarry. She's 80 years old. She has a mind of her own, Teddy. I don't think our opinion counts. But not a sound mind, Anna. Not a sound mind. The old girl's potty. She's ill, Teddy, not potty. Listen, why don't you go in and get some tea on? I'll unload the shopping. And who is this Mr. Fallon? Mona's betrothed. Yeah, well, I presume that, thank you, Paul. She can't get married at her age. She can, and she is. And why hasn't anybody consulted me? I think she'll make a beautiful bride. Oh, I'm sure. And there'll be a beautiful bill at the end of it all, and who's going to end up paying it? <laughs> you couldn't carry this in on your way through, could you? I saw you. I saw you. There's a law against truanting, you know. I saw you. Come on, then, Anna. Tell me the worst. Well, the good news is that she seems a lot better in herself than she has done for a long time. And I suppose they've got five nights in Acapulco booked for the honeymoon as well. Well, they want to have the service in Kendall, so I presume they'll stay up there, but she hasn't spoken about it. She's not a toy boy, this Fallon chap, is he? Not exactly. So what will I ask him over? I think she's reached a certain age when she feels she needs some special kind of company. And Mr. Fallon seems to be the perfect companion. It's unbelievable, isn't it, at her age? It's not necessarily unbelievable at any age. Oh, come on, Anna. We bought her a teddy to keep her company. She's our mother. And if she feels the need for some special kind of company, then it's our fault. If there's a gap left in her life when father died, then it's our selfishness which has left it unfilled. I've got to work, Anna. I've got to make a living. And how does Rosalind cope with all the time you seem to need to spend on your work? She reaps the benefits. Yes, but how is she? She's fine. And how long is it since you asked her? She's fine, she's fine. She doesn't complain. And how about Paul and all this time you spend dispensing justice and so on? Oh, he's fine. He doesn't complain either. Yes. Miss Alyssa still wants you to speak for me as well. It's not that easy, Tracy. Still away from there. But you're my only witness. If you don't speak, I may as well not bother. I'd really do without all this, you know. How do you think I feel? Well, what about me? How do you think I feel? I never said it was going to be easy for you. <sighs> Look, even if I was a witness, there's no guarantee he wouldn't win. And then I'd have to go back and work there, wouldn't I? After witnessing against him. He'd love that, wouldn't he? Yeah, but if you don't speak, he's going to get away with it anyway. I can't afford to lose my job. Well, neither could I. Oh, you know what I mean? You know what he's... Well, well, well. Racy Tracy. What's this, then? Not a picket line, is it, girls? It's a free country. I can stand where I like. Not very good for business, you know, rowing outside the salon. Who said we were rowing? Well, that's what it looked like to me. Has this, uh, ex-employee been harassing you, Nicky? Of course 
she hasn't, no. Nikki's enjoying her work these days, you know. I've made sure of that, haven't I, Nikki? Well, we made up for it. I'll have to go in. I'll see you sometime. It's possible you've come to see me, I suppose. Tell me it's all been a big mistake. We can all admit mistakes, you know. My only mistake was getting a job working for you. Oh, Tracy. Get off! Tracy. Get off me, I'll scream. Oh, come on, love. Don't you think you're going a bit overboard in all this? Come on, you're upset, Nikki's upset. Why don't we just come to a quiet arrangement between ourselves, eh? Save everybody all this tribunal hassle. It'll not do anybody any good. I mean, it won't do you any good. I mean, just a laugh and a joke, wasn't it? If you'd really wanted me to stop, you only had to tell me. I can take a hint. You take a hint? You're too thick-skinned and ignorant. Me? Ignorant? You're looking at a man on a ladder, girl. And there's a lot of bright lights at the top. And you know what? You'll never be seeing them, will you? Because you don't know what's good for you. Listen, my sister knows I'm here, so leave me alone, OK? And she knows what's good for me. You don't like to turn me scissors, don't you? If you change your mind, I'll be in the sandwich bar. Got your bright lights off. And stay away from my staff, will you? This couldn't have come to worse time for me, you know. She could have left it till August. The time's hardly on her side, though, is it? But even this date she's put down. I'm supposed to be in Dubai that week. Well, you'll have to cancel it, won't you? Can't let your own mother down, not on her wedding day. Well, I wasn't at the last one, was I? Look, Anna, it's in the diary. I can't just cancel it. It's taken me three months to set up these meetings. Anyone for any more tea? Just pretending she's in love, I suppose. Biscuit Terry, I'm afraid these are all I could find. Uh, you couldn't do me a sandwich, could you, Anna? I'm going to miss lunch as it is. Nothing for me, Anna. Don't know what's got into her. Thought she was long past this sort of thing. Cheese all right? Hmm? Ah, uh, yes, love, fine, anything. You'd think they'd put bromide in their tea or something in these homes. Don't be so cruel. I'm not being cruel. I just can't believe that a woman of her age is having an affair. I mean, to be honest, I can't understand any woman over 50 having an affair. Can't be worth it by then, can it, Paul? I don't exactly think it's any of my business. No, of course, it's nobody's business but their own. It's just the thought of it. Of course, it would seem different to you, seeing as she's your mother. Well, imagine what Gordon would feel like about you, Anna. Teddy, I wonder if you'd mind if Anna wrapped up your sandwich so that you were able to eat it on the way? No, I'm all right for a few minutes. I want to talk about the will. Oh, that's very noble of you, isn't it? To come round on the very day when you think you might lose some of Mother's money. It's a pity that you weren't so quick when she was going through such a bad time last year. But I'm sorry. I told you at the time I was busy. Well, if you're so busy, why don't you get up and go and do something instead of sitting there upsetting us? What have I said? I was only joking about the bromide. What Anna's trying to say is that calling round unannounced, you've happened to come at a pretty inconvenient time. Fine. Fine. Well, you don't mind if I use the bathroom before I go, do you? Won't be long. Mrs. Rogers? Mrs. Rogers? Oh, hello, Paul. Is everything all right? Well, not in my book. I think you ought to know your son's been truanting again. Oh, no, it's all right. He's here because he's been taught at home for a while, but thank you for the thought anyway. Oh, I see. Being taught to play football behind the grounds, is he? When was this? Less than an hour ago. He knows I saw him, but he'll probably deny it. He's not an untruthful kid, Paul. He's not a troublemaker, really. Oh, I'm sure he's not, when he's under proper supervision. It's all right, I'm not going to shout at you. Going over to glance? I just want you to know I'm really... and I mean really disappointed. Just wanted some for this year, so... It's your life, Jeff. I can only help you to get better at things, but you've got to want that for yourself. 
I can't want for you. Weird, isn't it? Some days when it's dead quiet. No, it saves paperwork, doesn't it? So, what trudge you for, then? Oh, hey, no-one's asked me that for ages. Come on. Only if it's between you and me and not everyone else at the station. Come on. Roderick? No, it's not. What is it, then? <sighs> Rodney. Me the bloody. I like that. Why don't you start? Hey, you two. I want to make a complaint. Hello, love. You got a bit of a problem. I want to make a complaint about that silly get with his motorbike. Haven't you got a garage to do that in? If we had a garage, I could live in it. Is that your husband, love? Well, it's not my mother, is it, bright boy? There's no need for that. Will you come out if you're asking nicely? Elvis! You're wanted. All right, blaming it all on me, is she? Blaming it all on me. She's the one. She's off her head, you know. It's no wonder I'm off my head living with you, is it? And it runs in her family. She never told me that when we got married, did she? Honest love, being married to him, I deserve more than a medal. Hey, you remember, you get what you deserve. And when you got me, you got more than you deserve. Hey, you wouldn't prefer to talk about this indoors, would you? There is such a thing as a uh, indecent exposure. Talk about what? Me complaining about you and your disgusting ways. Me? I'm not the one who gives the dog a good night kiss and then expects me to be all over her. Come on, love. Let's go and put the kettle on. I think it's more of that bike than he does with me. Yeah, well, at least the bike's got a silencer on it. Hey, come on now, mate. Let's not go making things worse, eh? Some chance of that, son. Some chance of that. Right then, we're gonna talk civilised to each other or what? And he stays out supping with his mates all night, not to know the meaning of the word civilised. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You go out, you get blathered every night, he does. Hey, come on, we'll get nowhere with everyone accusing everyone else now, will Six we? Six or eight pints I have, that's all. You got some tea somewhere, love? He goes out, he gets blathered, then he comes home and picks on the dog, then he kicks the dog out, then he starts on me. No, I don't. And I'm playing cards on a Friday, I never see him. Well, at least I get some peace and quiet when I'm out. How about we go and have a look at your bike, mister? What was it? Davis. Look, it's Davis. all in good order, and it's tax. You've no worries on that score. I'm not looking at your tax. I just want to see your bike. I'm interested in bikes. My dad used to have a C15. It's a bit much like, isn't it, love? Keeping that bike in here. He doesn't even see the problem, you know. We've had all oil all over the carpets. And my chest gets bad with the fumes, you know. Never met anyone called Elvis before. Wish I could say the same. All right, now, Elvis, what's the score? We're there. Nothing, really. I'm just winding her up, aren't I? She takes it serious. Look, you're wasting our time, you know. I've got to go back to the station and spend ages filling in a 104D. And I resent spending that time for no reason. I could be out there keeping an eye on real little kids getting into real trouble. Not just big kids like you and your missus playing stupid games. It's boring, you know that. Now, are you going to sort it out between you? If she'll just stay off me back for five minutes, love. Can't you just talk to her instead of shouting at her? Hey, yeah, all right, all right. Just tell her I live here and all, you know. Now, listen, Elvis, what do you think you're doing? What? Look, just get in the other room. I'll sort this out. I wasn't doing nothing. I was just calming down. Yeah, well, so you say. We're doing things my way now and not yours. And I want you to go in there and apologise to Constable Reed. What for? For whatever you were just doing. I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, well, uh, so you say. I want you to go in there and uh, calm down and stay there, all right? Are you all right? Why? When you don't normally sit like that. I'm not normally suffering from a serious overdose of your irritating brother. Well, could you pass me that bin? Thanks. You don't suppose he might go round and see her, do you? Oh, he wouldn't be able to spare the time. She'd probably have to book to see him over a working breakfast at Manchester Airport. Well, I just hope he doesn't try to persuade her out of the wedding. But he'll only get confused now she's made up her mind. Do you want me to get the dustpan? Oh, you don't mind. I suppose he might go round and twist Gerald's arm up his back. Tell him to get out of town. Don't know why she ever asked for Teddy's help. She knows what he's like. 
I can't imagine how anyone can consider him a safe investment. If I'd ever been his boss, he wouldn't have risen above tea boy. If you'd ever been his boss, he wouldn't have deserved to be the tea boy. Well, I couldn't let him carry on like that. Putting his bank account before your mother's happiness, if that's what it turns out to be. You know, I sometimes wonder if mother might not outlive us all. You're not about to suggest we should write her into our wills. No, not about to mention wills, legacies, or money of any sort. Your mother will probably be dead for five years before he decides it's time to do something to help her. I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to find an excuse to miss her funeral, be in Abu Dhabi or somewhere. Oh, dear. I seem to have neglected these for some while. Oh, they probably wilted when the hot desert wind wafted by. Why don't you just go and talk to him, love? And listen. Just see what he's got to say. I don't have to take any notice, do I? Go on. We'll hang on for a few minutes in case you need us. Yeah, just give us a shout, like. Next time, Rod. If I'm handling something, just let me sort it out and get on with my own way, all right? All right, no need to shout. Why? The neighbours are used to it. I thought the guy was overstepping the mark. I was worried for you. I've got a tongue in my head, haven't I? I can ask for help if I need it. Yeah, well, next time, OK? Next time. I don't mind someone pulling bank on me, but I don't like my male mates pulling sex on me. If you see what I mean. Mm. His tea's disgusting. God. Listen, oh. why don't you come back with me later on for a cup of coffee? Maybe we can talk tactics or something. I'm supposed to be meeting Kirsty. Only for an hour, Rod. Just to unwind and have a chat. Nikki? Hiya. I'm, I'm sorry you did a runner. Um, do you want to come in for a coffee? Yeah, just for a bit. Look, I'm not promising anything. I've just come for a chat and that's all. Um, could I leave a message for Nurse Kirsty Brown, please? Ready to make a move, then? Hope he's gonna leave 10p for that. Yeah, message right from Rod. Um, tell her I won't be able to meet her from work, OK? I'll see you to the door, love. Well, just tell her something's come up at work and uh, that'll give her a ring. Right, thanks. OK, bye now. So, uh, are you two all sorted, then? Well, looks like you are. Well sorted. Like how? Working late with a nice young girl like that. Go on, lad, you go and dip your bread. I'll stay here and pick the flesh off the owl wife's bones. I was wondering. I was thinking it uh, might be quite nice to invite some people round for dinner one night. Some people from the probation committee. What sort of people? People like us. Couples. Well, go on, write it down. Hang on. <sighs> You've already got it written once up there. Hang on. Up there. Hang on, you're going too fast. <sighs> Look, all you have to do is copy it from there to there. I keep going to write it then. I think it's wrong. All you have to do is copy it, Jeff. <sighs> Jeff, that is Sykes, not Skies. Well, I'm trying. I don't want to make a mistake. Are you taking the Mickey, Jeff? Why don't you just call me stupid mum, like everyone else? You're going to hate me, aren't you? For letting you down. Well, I can't force you, can I? Wouldn't it be easier to just get some compensation or something on the side? But that's not going to compensate for me losing my job, and he's still going to be there with no one standing up to him. He hasn't been too bad recently. And well, he's bound to be on his best behaviour, isn't he? Especially with all this tribunal business coming up. I wish you hadn't told him about me and the teacher. I should have kept it a secret, shouldn't I? I'll tell you what. 
I'll forgive you if you stand up for me in court. I, I decided I was going to be a witness, but then I thought, well, I'd have to tell my mum and dad everything in case they got in the papers or something. And your mum and dad wouldn't like you doing it. Well, they wouldn't mind me doing it. They'd go mad if I lost my job. And I'm the only one working in our house, you see, and they need the money coming in. Has he really been keeping his hands to himself? No, not really. Look, I understand what you mean about your mum and dad and work and that. Well, we've been through a bit of that ourselves. So you're still going to go ahead? I don't know what to do. tragic story of the irreversible suicide attempt that was the classic cry for help in Jimmy's. Are you Samantha Rogers? Yeah, what do you want? Well, you're Sammy Rogers, are you? You're the one that's caused me all the bother with this. What is it? What are you talking about? You might have done it in all innocence. You've caused a lot of upset between me and my girlfriend. And I just want to ask you never to do anything so stupid again. Are you real? Stranger to you, that's why I'm blue. You're the one who gets me going. My love for you, I'll save dear Owen. It's awful. It doesn't even rhyme. You, Owen. Oh, no, that's good. Morris. Oh, that's even better. Hey, you! What are you on about? What's good? Pretending you don't know me. Pretending you didn't even send it. Me? You thought, oh, don't talk soft. Well, who told you that? Who are you, anyway? Look, just stay away from me, will you? Just leave me alone, all right? No, look, I've never seen you before. I don't know who you are, and I definitely didn't send you any stupid valentine. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. So you got the message then, eh? I told my girlfriend to do this, and I have. Just thank God. Why do you think I sent it? I was told. Who told you? One of your mates. Who? Ronnie. OK. So you know where you stand then, eh? Look, I'm sure you're very nice. But I'm just not interested. See ya. Not better, then. So, here we go into the third and final round. Are you Mike watching this? What's up? There's something happened at work. No. Oh, sorry, I was just miles away. What did you say? Well, would you mind if I turn it down? Like, cos I'm, you know, trying to take it. Well, yeah, you can turn it off if you like. I wasn't really watching it. Well, you filled me for the last half hour. I thought you were well into it. Look, turn it off. Do whatever you want. All right, all right. Do you want a cup of tea? No, thanks. Do you want to go out? Well, where to? Down the swan. <sighs> Very original. Well, I don't know anywhere. A bit late for the pictures, though, isn't it? 
I don't want to go out anyway. I'm going to go and wash my hair. Look, I know it seems quite a long way off, but it's going to be honest before we know it. We've got everything planned. I mean, after all, it's the most important day of our lives, isn't it? I'm not saying it isn't. It's just that I can't get worked up about what colour the serviette should be. Well, who's going to decide if it's not? I know, I know. Blue. Blue? With the bridesmaid's dresses being Hawaiian magenta? You can't just say the first colour that comes into your head. You know, they've got to complement one another. Eh, uh, Hawaiian magenta, then? Do you actually know what colour Hawaiian magenta is, Rod? I am sorry. I just want everything to be right, that's all. I know you do. <laughs> it's not funny, Ronnie. You was dead serious. Well, I don't know him, honestly. Then why did he say you told him I sent it? I don't know. Perhaps he's just off his head. No. You just seem mad, that's all. It's what I said. I don't mean mad loopy. I mean annoyed like. He says his girlfriend still almost split up with him because of it. Well, I don't know him. Well, are you going to let me copy these mats over? I don't see why I should. You must know something about it, Ronnie. He was dead serious. God, you should have seen him. Hey, perhaps he got us all mixed up. How do you mean? Well, he said it was me. But somebody might have just pointed us out and got our names mixed up. Somebody else might think Lou's me or Nisha's me. Hey, they might have even got you mixed up. One of the others might have sent that card. Yeah. Hey, yeah, perhaps you should warn there's a nut on the loose arm with a valentine. He's not armed, it's here. What? The Valentine? Yeah. Oh, let's have a look if I can recognise the writing. Oh. Feeling any better? How do you mean? I was just wondering how you were, that's all. I'm all right. No, I'm just a little bit off. Hey, look, why don't you go out for an hour? Nah, it's all right. I'd rather stay here with you. I don't mind, really, I don't. Well, not that there's much chance of being alone around here. Oh, yeah. Hi. You're back late. Uh, well, Manchester. Yeah, had to uh, had to be there. So Cheryl and I stopped off for a quick bite to eat and then home. Had a good day? Yeah, I made a few bobbin tips and that no one spewed up in the back of the cab. Terry. Yeah, well, to me, that's a good day. Right, what's it to be then? Um, quick drink down the pub, a game of Trivial Pursuit, or do we get on and finish the kitchen? Ah, well, I have to get on with my project. Sue's not feeling too well. Oh? What's the matter? I'll be all right. I just don't fancy going out, that's all. Hey, look, why don't you two go down the pub for a bit? What is that? You sure? If I wasn't sure, I'd say so. OK, let's go, then. See you later. Mm. You'll see me much later. <sighs> Do you want any crisps, nuts or anything like that? No, thanks. Right. See ya. Bye. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm all right. It's just my bad time. I don't suppose I dare mention the guest list. Oh, don't be like that. How many people should we invite then? Well, Mum said she'd limit it to about a hundred. A hundred? That's a lot, isn't it? Oh, you'd be amazed how quickly they all add up, you know. Menti Geraldine's coming over from Tasmania. There's sex. I mean, I don't think we should encourage people to bring children, but if you come all the way from Tasmania, you can't really turn them away now, can you? I suppose not. A hundred, though. Well, that's only the reception. There's going to be more at the night time, too. What are you having the night time, do? Oh, I haven't decided yet, have we, Rod? See, that's another thing. My dad suggested the St Vincent's Club because he knows he's steward, but it's Catholic. So what does that matter? Well, it doesn't matter to me, but some people are funny about it. And with my dad not meeting your dad yet, he doesn't know what to think. Well, we've got Catholic lodges. All right, all right. Look, uh, we'll arrange it for them all to meet. What time is getting on, Rod? God, I know, yeah. Come on, let's get out for the last hour, eh? That's not what I mean, and you know it. Anyway, we're not going to be able to afford to go out whenever we want when we're married, you know. Don't you think we should get used to that? No, come on, it won't cost much. I'll have to see you at home anyway. Oh, only if you want to. I'm quite capable, you know. Well, let's go. I've done nothing all night except talk about arrangements. I want a break. Well, you know the alternative. The arrangements are getting you down. You should always call it off, you know. No, don't tempt me. Oh, five. That's how you feel about it. You know I don't mean it. 
The whole thing's such a pain, that's all. I don't mean you, or the marriage. It's just all I'm messing about. Come on, let's go out. Aren't you gonna get changed first? Would well, you think you should wear the Hawaiian magenta suit or what? How are you? I'm all right. It's not long to the tribunal, is it? Next week. I'm dreading it. Still not told Roddy your dad about it? No, and you mustn't. I promised it, Nag. What about Nicky? Any luck with her yet? No. You still worried she won't turn up? Yeah. I think I'd have packed the whole thing in if it wasn't for me solicitor. But she's been great. And she's doing it all for nothing as well. If I don't win, she won't get paid. You'll win. Will I stick at it? A good reason for this. Um. Is that it? Sorry, I didn't think you'd be in bed. I just wanted to see you, have a talk. We see each other nearly every day. We talk a lot. Been out with the boys, have you? Had a few pints and tried to think of anywhere to go except home. No, it isn't like that. I've had three pint shandies and I've been discussing my wedding arrangements with my fiance. <laughs> Terrific. And you're here to ask me to be the chief bridesmaid? No, me because I wanted to see you as a mate. I'm sorry I got you out of bed. As a mate? What is it then? Should we get the cart out or find a snooker hall that's still open? Sorry, I, I shouldn't have disturbed you. Oh, sit down. I was only reading anyway. I don't keep any drinking. I'm shattered. I think a decent drink had uh, sent me to sleep. So where have you been then? No, oh, just round and about, you know. Anything to get out of the house. Planning a wedding has got to be one of the most boring things on this air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sound, you. Do you know that? Yes, Rod. I know that. No, I mean, it, we make a good team, you and me. What do you think your Kirsty would say if she knew you were here now with me? Good question. She'd probably wonder if you would come to the wedding. And if so, where should you sit? Should you sit between Auntie Geraldine, who's coming all the way from Tasmania, <laughs> and Mr and Mrs Harrison, who she doesn't like, but her mum and dad have a drink with them every Sunday afternoon, and she feels obliged to invite? Just a coffee. All right. And then I'll take you home. I don't know where. Uh, might just get a better offer. Is that you, Jonathan? Right, sir. Oh, you'll do. You get your homework done? Yeah. Did you have a good night? Mm-hmm. Could get even better. Thanks for the lift. It's all right. See you tomorrow, then. Well? Well? What are you waiting for? Well, you wanted to drive me home. At least you can do is see me to the front door.
thank you for a wonderful evening. I'd like to invite you in, but it's late, and I have to be up early in the morning. And it wouldn't be fair early because... Shut up. You kiss me goodnight. Whatever you're doing, can you do it quietly, please? Why, oh, why did we leave the kitchen till last? Because we were always using it. Where's the milk? In the fridge. What's it doing in there? Have I had a second cup? Oh, I guess that must be new to me. An English tradition, no doubt. You all right? I think I'll take the morning off. Good idea. You look a little bit peaky. Will you be all right on your own? Yeah, it's nothing to worry about. Well, yeah, I can take the morning off, eh? Or I can carry on with my project and then go into college this afternoon. I'll be all right, thanks. I wish I could take the morning off. I've got to see Simon Jackson first thing. Oh, well, maybe he's going to offer you a ride. Look, he's sure yeah, going to be all right on your own. Must have yeah, don't later. worry. Bye. It's nothing to worry about. Oh, it's only asking. Bye. Bye. All right, Rod, I believe you. It was just a laugh, that's all. Yeah, do you come? And she just grabbed hold of me. That's all there is to it. What's up with you? You. That's all there is to me. Oh, well, it is. Look, Rod, I'm not bothered one way or the other. It's just that case you might one day. How Emma came to give you a lift home? And from where? Well, if she doesn't know anything about it, she won't ask, will she? How come you went out with Kirsty? I'm from home with Emma. Well, I saw Kirsty onto a bus in town, right? And then I bumped into Emma, and she just gave me a lift home. It's all perfectly innocent. Oh, yeah. And if you want to know what colour Hawaiian magenta is, have a look in the mirror. Hello? Yeah? Bring you. Owen, Owen who? <sighs> no, I didn't just ring it and put the phone down. No, I've never rung it, and I've no reason to. Goodbye. <sighs> Bye, Mum. We never made any promises. Maybe we can call the way without the Don't have to. What's going on? All the promises about a partnership haven't meant a thing. I'm good. I know it, and they know it, and they've ignored me. Your partnership was a foregone conclusion, Sarah. Tell me what's happened. When I think of all the hours I've put in, all the extra work I took on because I cared about this company... Oh, calm down. Come in, Jonathan. I'll talk to you later. If the police haven't carted me away on a murder charge, which any reasonable judge would reduce to justifiable homicide under the circumstances... No doubt she's too emotional to explain the rationale behind the firm's decision. She's just told me she hasn't got the partnership. What's going on? We've offered it to Clive Hopkins. And we're confident he'll accept. Oh. Well, yes, yes, he'll accept, all right. Yes, then he might think April Fool's Day is coming a little early and hesitate. Have you anything constructive to say now that the final decision's been made? I'm a little surprised that he's been chosen in preference to Sarah. Oh, why is that? That's a personal opinion. And as the decision has been made, I don't really see the point in discussing it now. Don't tell me you've become a diplomat, Jonathan. I thought I always was. Come on, now. Off the record. Why would you have chosen Sarah instead of Clive? Off the record, I wouldn't have chosen Clive at all. I think he's immature, cavalier and rather ostentatious. On the other hand, I consider Sarah mature, steady, quietly conscientious. Interesting. Immature? I'd say young and full of fresh ideas. Cavalier, yes, but not to the point of recklessness. And ostentatious. Stylish and full of energy. The sort of man we should encourage for the 90s. Do I get the impression that man 
is the key word here. I don't think so, Jonathan. What do you think she'll do? Why don't you ask her? Oh, I will eventually. Do you think she'll be leaving us? I think that's a question to ask when you speak to her. Was there something else? No, no, just the news about the new partner. Thanks for the chat. Pleasure. He told me you hadn't got your partnership. He told me that Clive Hopkins had. And he told me he was a sexist behind the times bigot. He said what? Not in so many words. I had my heart set on a partnership. I think I've earned it. We'd make a good partnership. Whoa. Slow down. I said I understand, and if I was in your position, but I'm not. Yet. Yet. True. That's a big step, Sarah. Journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. Original? Mal, probably after Confucius. What do you think? I prefer the Greeks myself. What do you think about the idea of a partnership? I think I need to think. And I think you need to think in the cold light of your bank balance. Oh, but Clive Hopkins, Jonathan, you need a sense of humour to accept that. But do you really want to sit freezing in your own rented furnished office? It takes money to buy all this, you know. The way I feel at the moment, I would open a practice outside in a dog kennel. And you want me to consider being your partner? <laughs> we can afford a big dog kennel. Oh, promise me you'll think about it. Talk it over with Cheryl. Why don't we both talk it over with Cheryl? Are you serious? I'm serious about inviting you over. When? Tomorrow. Fine. Good. Um, shall I invite Clive Hopkins too? We can make it a celebration dinner. Come home specially, have you? Oh, I can work just as easily from home. Oh, Sharon, you shouldn't have. It's okay, I love an excuse to work from home. How are you really feeling? Guilty. Don't be. It's peaceful here to get through the amount of work they pile on us. I don't know how you manage it all. Have to. Some people would love it if I failed. Some back home, I mean. So every time I feel like I can't cope, I just think about them rubbing their hands together, gloating over me, failing the exams, and I have added incentive. It gets a bit harder once a month, though. I wish they'd make allowances for that. Perhaps we should wear a badge or something. Do you take anything? No. Me neither. I suppose I should try sometimes, but I never really found anything that helped. Cheryl? Yeah? I'm pregnant. Are you sure? I'm positive. Please don't say anything, but I, I just had to tell somebody. But haven't you told Terry yet? I don't know how to. Oh, hey, come on. He'll be delighted. He'll be surprised and then delighted. It's 1989. It isn't his. How can you be so sure? I'm sure. I wish it wasn't, Cheryl, but I'm sure. What am I going to do? Oh, 
The hectic and complicated world of the ambulance crew is highlighted next at Jimmy's. Stayed in bed till you'd all gone to school. Yeah, and I'd have still found you there when I got home at lunchtime. I'll set the alarm. You're up now, so stop going on about it, eh? Why can't we all be taught at home? Because most of us can manage quite well at school. That's enough, thank you. Yeah, well, he should be there as well. Everyone keeps asking me what's up with him. Judy. Yeah, I tell them we've been put away. Oh, Sammy! No, she doesn't. She tells them he's off sick. Why can't you just tell them the truth, love, that he has been taught at home? Because it's just easier to say he's off sick. He'll have to go back some time anyway. Only when he's guaranteed the best education available to him. Now, will you come on, please? Yeah, girls, the bell will be going soon. You don't want to miss registration, do you? And you can start your day by washing up your breakfast things. Well, that's not fair. Mum, have you seen me today? Why don't you get things ready the night before, no way? Sell your mine if you want. <sighs> you mind your own business now. Come on. What are you doing today, Mum? <sighs> will you hurry up and finish your breakfast, please? You haven't thought of anything yet, have you? I prepared it last night. Now you go off and find your tie. Can I have games today, Mum? Will you go and get dressed now? Hi. Hi. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, mate. Hi, love. Oh, hi, love. You look shattered. I am. Oh. Just spent the last three hours on the hard shoulder of the M69 after the tie went. I'm more tired of just sitting there waiting. Well, never mind. You can unwind now for the rest of the day, eh? I can't. I've got to go to a union meeting and I have to. Oh, I wanted you to make sure our Jeff did his work for me. Oh, no, Chris. I'm having nothing to do with it. You're his dad? I know, but I didn't drag him out of school, though, did I? No, Chris, if you want to teach him at home, then have a go, love. You've made your point, but I think the lads should be back in class. I'll go along with you. You don't expect me to try and teach him. I'm a wagon driver, and that's that. Are you sure, then? Sure, I'm sure. Won't be anything extravagant, just good, simple food. Well, sounds good to me. Are you sure? Yeah, it'll do so good to have a night out. Well, I don't feel obliged to go out just because Sarah's coming round. No, it's all right. I mean, I want us to go out and have a chat anyway. She's been getting up in the middle of the night, you know. Have you heard her? No. It's probably not unlike. Hey, she hasn't said anything to you, has she, Cheryl? No. So that's the plan, is it? Then dinner for three followed by some serious plans for the future. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm counting out of that. Mine's already planned. Well, at least it's level, anyway. You shouldn't have, but thanks. Did you manage to sleep? Yeah. Well, the worst time is when you first wake up and everything seems fine, and then you remember, and it all hits you again. Do you want to talk? If you don't, I'll understand. Well, Terry's the one I should be talking to. But how can I tell him he's not the father? Does the father know? No. Sorry. The father doesn't know and never will. But isn't that sensible? I thought it was over between him and me. 
We'd had this long-running affair three years ago, and I thought it was all over. The point is, it was. But I hesitated. I took time out to choose between him and Terry, and by the time I'd made the right decision, I'd already slept with him again. And I can hardly believe it. Martin? And you hadn't seen him till he came here that night with John. I love Terry. I can't hurt him. Right. You should be able to finish that little lot easily by the time I get back from work. All right, Mum. Don't keep going on. Well, don't you be so cheeky. You make sure that your dad's awake by one o'clock, all right? Right. See you, Lisa. Yes, yeah, all right. Be good. Bye-bye, love. Sure you don't want to come? Nah, shopping's the last thing on my mind. I'd only be a killjoy. Well, I'm only buying food and a present for John's mum. It's hardly it's free. What, a birthday? Mother's Day. I may that today I might just make it. Mother's Day. Sorry. It's all right. I'll just have to learn not to be sensitive about these things. <laughs> you are going to tell him, aren't you? Terry or Martin? Terry. I just don't know what to do. Would your family be supportive? Well, they're not that keen on Terry, to be honest. I mean, if I was married and could say we are having a baby, they'd be delighted, but what can I say to them now? That I've let my man down because of one stupid night for old time's sake, would you believe? <sighs> of all the times for the precautions not to have worked, Stupid night. All the reasons for a baby to be conceived. Hasn't that got to be the most petty, ridiculous, stupid, stupid, stupid? Sue. You can't go on like this. I mean, you've got to talk to somebody. If you won't tell Terry, tell your family. Or tell Martin. No, I'd never tell Martin. He'd only use it. I know he would. He might want me back because of the baby, and then there'd be that pressure and... No, no, I couldn't handle that. And are you absolutely sure about the time? Yeah, positive. It happened when I didn't see Terry for over a month. Yep, I'm sure all right. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have got you involved. It's OK, you had to talk to somebody. No. It's my problem. It's my baby. My body and it's me who's going to have to sort it out. I'm going to go and get dressed. Seething, but past the point of committing murder, I think. I don't want to have you reaching for the Kalishnikov, but... But? The loathsome Simon is going to talk to you. He wants to see how you feel and perhaps try and find out if you're intending staying. Is it the Kalishnikov or the suicide pill? The choice is yours. <laughs> see you tonight, if you survive the ordeal. It's nearly 20 past one. Late. Oh, not if you get up straight away, you know. Come on. All right, I'll be down a minute. Have you seen anything of our Jeff? No, why? Well, he isn't in. I'll make you a drink and a sandwich, look, okay? Yeah. 
See, please. I've no idea where he is, you know. He hasn't even started the work I left for him. Did some of you surprised? Well, I am, to be honest, yes. Chris, if you won't do it for teachers who are standing over him all day, what chance have you got? You're not even here. Well, at least I'm trying. Look, doesn't it even bother you that he's missing? Not as much as it worries me that he's missing school. Oh. You'd have him colouring in and drawing maps of the British Isles, would you? Bored to death and learning nothing. At least we know where he was. He's probably out there now wandering the streets because he's bored to death at home. And you've driven him out there, Chris. That's a terrible thing to say. He'll be all right. Look, I've got a dash. There are only three of you for dinner. There are? I just decided to give it the works, though. How are you? Well, I'm still pregnant, if that's what you mean. I was thinking about you all the time I was in town, so I decided to do something about it. Don't look so worried. I went to the Citizens Advice Bureau. I didn't even mention you. I said it was my problem, and I didn't even have to give my name, just the circumstances. Please listen, she was a really nice lady. Well, the complication was that she thought that I was American, which is the best way to insult a Canadian, by the way. But basically, I came away with three points of advice. Are you okay? No, but as you've started, you might as well carry on. Well, the first thing was to consult the British Pregnancy Advice Bureau and or LIFE, which I think is a Catholic organization. And the second thing is to take your time over any decision you make, because the baby may have been conceived in haste, but that's no reason to make hasty decisions now. For God's sake, is that it? Is that the total wisdom of the Citizens Advice Bureau? Hasty decisions? Do you think I've thought about anything else for the past few days? Now, just hang on a minute here. You've told me about this, and as far as I know, you've told nobody else. Well... I didn't ask to be put in this position. I sure as hell don't like it. And, you know, it wasn't easy to go in there and pretend to be in your situation. Look, I'm sorry. But you were only pretending. I have the biggest problem I've ever had in my life. And I've done something about it. Like what? I've made an appointment to have an abortion. Are you sure about this? <sighs> no, of course I'm not sure! The only thing I'm sure about is that I don't want Terry hurt. And if he ever found out, it would be the worst hurt of all. There is a third piece of advice if you want to hear it. Don't assume Terry won't support you. How could I ever tell him? No, Cheryl, he must never find out. If that's what you want, it has to be your decision. Where will you have it done? At a private clinic. I'll need someone to bring me home. Meaning me, I suppose. Terry asked me the other night if I knew what was bothering you. But you'll never find out. 
And what he doesn't know about won't hurt him. I need your help, Cheryl. I've got nobody else to turn to. Oh, Jeff. Mrs. Rogers? Yes? Educational welfare. Mrs. Twist. You'd better come in. I I'm sorry, it's uh, just that chap hanging around down there. You don't usually get people hanging around to you. You can never be too careful. No. Please come in. Thank you. Please sit down. First of all, let me assure you that we all have the best interests of Geoffrey at heart. I've been told of the circumstances leading up to the decision, and I can understand your frustration. Oh, good. Because that special unit was doing him no good at all. Well, it, it was making him feel as though there was something seriously wrong with him. It's robbing him of all his self-confidence. Hmm. I understand. We all want the best for our kids. I know I do. I've got three girls. How old are they? 16, 19 and 22. You don't look nearly old enough. <laughs> don't suppose it'll be too long before we have grandchildren. I'm quite looking forward to it, actually. But my husband says he's not looking forward to living with a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for two purposes, Mrs. Rogers. The first is to try and persuade you to return Geoffrey to the educational system. And I must admit, I think that I've failed if I don't do that. But then the second reason is to make sure that he's getting adequate teaching at home if you insist on carrying on doing it yourself. Oh, fine. I'd be more than happy to have someone to discuss it with. Would you like a cup of tea or something? Mm, always a good idea. All right. What do you want? Another today? little chat. I thought we got this all sorted out the other day, but obviously not. Now, listen, you. I didn't send you that card. None of me mates told you it did, so it looks like you've got the whole thing mixed up. Oh, I. I suppose you didn't send all these, either. What? You've got to cheat you up. Me send you chocolates. Look, on your way, you. I've never seen you before the other day. I didn't send you that card, and I certainly didn't waste money on them. Someone's having you on. Well, maybe you're right, but, um, why would someone want to get us together? Get us together? Look, I think you better go and start again, because it's got nothing to do with me. Hang on. It's got a lot to do with you, Sammy. What is going on? Valentine's, phone calls, chocolates. Someone's going to a lot of trouble. I don't even like chocolates. Here, you might as well have them. And what about your girlfriend? I think you should have them. Why didn't you just ask me out? Well, I thought all hands would be asking you out, didn't I? And I just thought... Oh, I feel a bit of a divvy now. Oh, you were brilliant. I hate you. Ah, oh, you're gonna tell me, Mum. Oh, Sammy's caught her. Casey jumped so stupid. Ah, oh, Sally's caught and... Come on, you. It would seem the best for all parties to leave things for a week, then, and see how you cope. Well, if you don't mind, and if you don't feel as though you'd failed. No, I don't feel that. I would like a word with Geoffrey, though. After all, it is his future we're dealing with at the end of the day. Well, yeah, well, um, he's out with his father at the moment. Um... Perhaps I could bring him round, or you could call back. Katie! Sorry, it's just that our Sam is Hello, you. Mrs Katie. She's our youngest and giddiest. Hello. You go on up and do your homework, love, all right? Yeah. Katie! Well, what are Katie been saying? This is Mrs Twist, from the Educational Welfare Department. Hello. Mum, I've got someone with me, and our Katie's probably... Well, go upstairs to your room, then, love. Upstairs? Well, that's where your room is, isn't it? And if you are going to play your records, please keep them down, because Katie's doing her homework. All right. All right. I'll leave you to it. I think perhaps I will call back. Say, next week sometime. Oh, fine. Um, Any time would suit. Well, it'd probably be best if you do phone first, just to make sure we haven't taken them out somewhere. On a field trip. <laughs> Get in and tell your mother where you've been. Um, he's been with you. I was just telling Mrs. Twist. So, where did you two get to then? Down the Albert Duck. He didn't want to come home. They're living history. Mrs. Twist is from the Educational Welfare Department, love. This is my husband, Frank. 
pleased to meet you. Hello. And hello, Geoffrey. I thought I was going to miss you. Oh, well, if we could perhaps just leave that chat for another time. If that's all right with you, Mrs Twist. It's just not my room. It's yours and I've got to get my own way done. What's up with you? Dad, Mum sent me upstairs to get my own way done. And Sally won't let me in there because she's got a boyfriend in there. She's got who in there? Oh, it's just a friend. Oh, Katie's come home in a silly mood. Well, Katie, go into Jeff's room. Do your homework there, love. Yeah, that room stinks of rats. Rats? She's got a vivid imagination. Well, come down, love. Sammy, you get down here as well. What's going on? That's what I'd like to know. Who's up there with you? Just a friend. Well, get them down here now. Well, um, perhaps sometime next week then, Mrs. Twist, eh? Jeff, you could do with a bath, love. Up you go. It's him. Get down here. Well, uh, I think probably a few explanations are called for families, eh? Um, next week, Mrs. Twist. Goodbye, Mrs. Rogers. What are you doing letting here? Have lads upstairs. Oh, I Dad. didn't know it was a lad, did I? Well, I guess that. I'm Owen. Get out. Oh, Frank. Dad, I'm destroyed. Who's Owen? Jeff, where have you been? Guess. Tell her. School. School. Or at least the school gates. Oh, Jeff, how could you? Fed up. Are there any restrictions on setting up near practice you've just left? No, no, that happens all the time. I think probably the, the best thing would be to look for a small company that could be bought out. But that could take forever. Possibly, but I think it's a sensible step. Oh, look, I can see the advantages, but I just don't know how long I could wait to find an established company. Hey, hang on a minute, guys. We've just reached and passed the most significant moment of the evening. We have? Oh, yeah. With typical British nonchalance, it just scooted on by. Well, you just said you'd like to take a look at existing firms that might want to sell out. Well, that says to me you've agreed to a partnership. All evening humming and hawing and being cautious, and then wham bam, and you've said it. Well, yes, I suppose I have, in a way. Sarah, so, you've licked him. Now haul him in before he can change his mind. Any more questions? Yeah. How do we get over being so scared? By saying to yourself, what are my priorities in this court? And then concentrating on making your statements simple and clear. I can't pretend it's going to be pleasant or easy, but you did it just now, and you can do it again. I'm not too sure, no. Don't worry. You've been very brave so far. Do it for all those other girls who are too frightened to stand up to employers who take advantage of their positions. I don't see that. I feel worse now. Don't. You'll be fine. And you won't be alone. I'll be there. Nikki won't do, will she? She might, Tracy. We'll see what we can do. But if not, we'll do without her, won't we? Are you sure about this? Yeah. Here's to, uh, what are you going to call the firm? Oh. Uh, something. We'll think something. So, now the hard work starts. Premises to find? Furniture to buy. Impressive furniture, very 1990s for a good image. Mm. Legal formalization of this evening? And rich clients to find the whole thing. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. If we lose, you'll have lost a lot of money, won't you? Not a lot. I think people exaggerate the amount solicitors earn. But we're not talking money here. We're talking about women standing up for themselves, aren't we, eh? Don't worry, Tracy. We'll look after you. It's worth it, you know. Yeah. Bye. Ta-ra. trip to the seaside for the dialysis children's unit at Jimmy's next.